statistics and excel mean and outliers got data let's get stuck into it with statistics and excel i mean we'll be using one note here but we'll still talk about excel you're not first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must have product. Because the fact as everyone knows of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Require to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left hand side, OneNote presentations, 14, 16, mean and outlier tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go to the view tab, use the immersive reader tool, changing the language if you so choose being able to read or listen to the transcript in multiple languages, tying the transcripts into the video presentation using the timestamps. OneNote desktop version here, data on the left-hand side, our salary data that we are imagining for a corporation, for example. We're gonna do some of our standard calculations on the data sets, such as the mean or the average, the median, the max, the min, quartile one, quartile three, and then, we're gonna add an outlier, in this case, imagining that to be the CEO salary, which is far higher than any other salary, and then look at what changes with those standard calculations and what implications those changes may have when we're making decisions in the future in terms of what types of numbers do we want to be using to represent our data set for relevant de decision making. All right, so if we look at our data set on the left-hand side, this is our salary data set. We're gonna be doing the average calculation. These are just our formulas for the average calculations that we've seen in prior presentations. Here's gonna be our uh, numbers that we would be calculating. We've got the mean or the average, which we could calculate using our formulas up here, which means we would basically add up our data set and divide by the number of uh, items within the data set. If using Excel, we can use this trusty average function, which would simply be equals average uh, in order to calculate it. Scroll out of here a little bit so we can see this at one time. Then we're gonna have the median. Remember, that's the one that we're gonna pick the one in the middle. So if we sort it from lowest to highest, simply picking the one in the middle is the median. And if we have Excel, Excel can do that for us. Obviously, we, not, we need to know what the difference is between a mean calculation and a median calculation. And we'll see here that, of course, there are times when one will be more relevant than another, and we have to pick the more relevant one. In this case, you can see that there are two are fairly close to each other, and that would give us an indication in and of itself that there isn't a huge outlier, possibly, that's really skewing the mean. If these two are very different from each other, that might give us an indication that that there could be an outlier impact. And if there is, then we probably wanna dig down deeper and see what's going on with it. So then we have the maximum. This is the largest number in the data set. We can get that by just using the function equals max to pick that up. And then we have the min. That's gonna be the lowest number in the data set, which we can see right here is the 67.9. The highest number, if I go down 84,000, was the 84,000 here. We can get to the min, which simply equals min calculation. And then we've got quartile one, which now we're taking like the middle point of that first quartile. We're, bre we're basically breaking the data set, taking it from top to bottom, right? And then breaking it up, not just in the middle point, but by quartiles 
and you can use in Excel uh, the quartile.exc. You have to use one more argument, a comma one, to get the quartile one to calculate. And then we have quartile three because we already have quartile two in the median. And here's the calculation for that quartile three. You just need a three at the end of it to be picking it up. Now, if we were to do the average calculation using our formula, we can sum up the entire, uh, all of our cells, which would be quite tedious to do in a calculator. But in Excel, we can recalculate this number, the average 71,498 by summing everything up, which is our, our most trusty function in Excel, the sum function. And then we are gonna divide that by the number of values, meaning we can count the number of values. Now to not do that manually, we can use a count function in Excel equals count all of all the cells in this table. It comes out to 51. And if we divide that out, then we get to our average. Let's see if I pull out the trusty calculator just to check it. 3646400 divided by 51. And we get to the, the 71498. It's rounded. Uh, as you can see, so there we have that. And this is just gonna show us the division in Excel, taking the cell divided by this cell. All right, so then uh, if I go to the right here, we, we can look at a histogram. Here is a histogram of our data, which is simply taking the buckets on the bottom and seeing how many uh, of these items fall into the buckets from 67.9 to 69.364. You know, you had between about nine from 69,364 to 70,827, you're up to like 15 and so on and so forth. And you've got a couple that are still kind of outline, kind of outside of this particular histogram, uh, but the data set is not a, that long either. Uh, now let's add a significant outlier, however. So we've got the same data set, but now at the bottom of it, it jumps up. We've got this one outlier, which is significantly larger than the rest of the data set. And it could be much larger than that even. Uh, one million, I mean, it could be like, you know, 10 million or something, <laughs> you know, they could really skew uh, the numbers. So what does that do when we look at our standard calculations? So if we, do, if we do our standard calculations with the same data set, but simply adding the outlier, now we're at, uh, 87 or 89,354 as opposed to the 71,498. So it's a pretty significant change. And if that outlier was a lot larger, you would have even a more significant kind of change to the average. So the outlier, you know, it will depend on how many numbers are in the data set and then how big that number is uh, relative uh, to, to, the, to the rest of the data set. And then if I look at the median, you can see that the median did not change. So that's a huge indication. Notice that these two have a fairly significant difference. So if I just looked at these two numbers versus these two numbers, I'm more likely to say over here, well, maybe there's an outlier because the median and the mean are fairly, are a little bit more significantly different from each other than over here. So that's gonna be an indication. That also shows us that if there's something that has an outlier in it, we have, to, we have to ask the question of what is our objective and which number would be best? How are we going to deal with that? If there's an outlier in it, then we might say that it'd be better to take the middle number. If I'm trying to, for example, see how much money I'm gonna earn at a particular organization, I probably can't pick the, the outlier is probably gonna skew that because I would, I would assume if I'm an average person, I would be somewhere in the middle but I can't take the average of all of them because that outlier kind of skews the whole average. Therefore, you're likely to take the median. That often happens with things like home prices, for example. If there's a million dollar home in the neighborhood or multiple million dollar home, but most of the homes are, are around you know 200,000 or whatever, then, then that outlier is gonna really skew the numbers of what the home may actually cost. The other thing that you could do is say, well, let me take all of the numbers and just trim off the outliers. I'm going to remove the outliers and then take the mean or the average without those outliers in it. So those are some strategies that you might take. But obviously also realize 
that when there's an outlier, that's another opportunity to kind of be a little bit deceptive with numbers, depending on what they're trying to do. You know, if they're if they're trying, if someone is trying to say, I'm, I live in a very wealthy area and get prestige or something or whatever, for they could say, well, the average of my, the average home price in my neighborhood happens is higher because they're taking into account outliers maybe, right? Because, you know, some rich person happens to have a mansion that lives in the neighborhood or something like that. And the, when, and this happens of course in business all the time as well, when people are trying to make an argument, they're usually going to look for the statistics, not to look for evidence to support a hypothesis in good faith. Unfortunately, oftentimes they're looking for numbers to support their argument, just like when they do with words. That, again, it doesn't mean the it doesn't mean the numbers are wrong. You can't blame the numbers. You got you got to blame the person who's being deceptive with the num with the numbers, right? And then and then look at it from a from a fuller picture and see if you can pick up what is going on. If we look at the maximum, obviously the maximum has changed now because this is the highest number in the data set. So this will give you a clear indication generally that there's an outlier. If you take the max and the min, there could be an outlier on the small side too. So now you can say, okay, well, yeah, the, the, now this outlier looks way higher than the average or the median. And that's another indication that there's that there's this outlier issue that you're going to have to deal with in some way in order to come up with a, a rational conclusion about whatever decision we're making and such as should i work for this place or how much am i likely to make in this place if i go in as an average person the min number did not change because there's no outlier on the min side of things the outliers on the max side of things now if one person like if there was if the ceo tried a bold strategy and said i'm not going to earn any money unless the profits go up and they take one dollar salary or something like that then it's possible you could have an outlier on the small side of one dollar right which again would probably would skew the numbers the other way not as far not as far as the million dollars but it would skew the numbers that way so then on quartile one we're a little bit different because I added a number over here. So now the quartiles are, are a little bit different because when I pick the middle number in the quartile, it, but it's still somewhat similar because that number is similar strategy as the strategy of the median. And then quartile two, it's a it's same, same concept. And so there we have those. And then the average down here, if I take my sum of the average numbers now, if I recalculate the average, I take the sum, which now comes out to that of all the numbers instead of this, because the 1 million uh, increased it significantly. If I do a count, I come out to 52 instead of 51, because we added that $1 million number and the number of, and the how many numbers are here. And if I divide that out, that gets, that's how we get to our 89,354 versus the 71,498. Now, if I took this data set as well and I made a histogram from it, now this histogram, I purposely put all, this is like all the data from the prior histogram, which is kind of over here scrunched together. And I put all the buckets in here so that we can get that outlier. So that outlier is over here. So obviously this is not a histogram format that you would probably want to, to give to someone else or something. But I, the only reason I'm formatting it this way is to show this outlier really skewing things so right if you had if you took your focal point the the me the mean it would be over here somewhere and that and that outlier like a teeter-totter is weighing way over on the on the right side which is which is why you get this this kind of uh impact now how can you deal with that with your histogram to make if you wanted to plot the data well there's a couple ways you could do that you could you could take all of your outliers anything that's over a certain dollar amount like say ninety thousand dollars you you put in as an outlier and then in excel your histogram would then cut out all you can cut out all these boxes and just include it over here at uh at the at the ninety thousand so that would mean that people looking at your histogram aren't going to get a sense of how extreme the outliers are. So again, you can see that as deceptive, so it depends on what you're doing. Because if you if you say, I just put everything that's an outlier over 90,000 in the outlier bucket, then you're going to get a histogram that shows you kind of the middle point better. 
but that it doesn't tell you how extreme the outliers are, which is fine because that, that might be useful for for uh, some cases. You could you could take the outlier out of your data set and then take a histogram uh, uh, without the outliers. So, but those are some strategies to to put together uh, the histogram in Excel, which we do in Excel. If you want to check that out.